what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're going to talk about scream 7 in this video here again today we're going to be going over how exactly they could reboot scream 7 without of course completely giving us a new timeline which hopefully they do not do that because there's no reason to do that and yes i do have to start off by reiterating i will double down on it again that obviously the preferred outcome is for spyglass to sell the rights because again they have two strikes i don't need a third to see who the problem is the problem is spyglass i think they should be removed chances are though that's not going to happen so i need to just be able to address this in a manner that is still realistic i would say but I'm going to talk about how Gail Weathers, Courtney Cox, and these other two that I'm thinking of, if they sign on, can still carry a Scream 7 and how it could work. So Kevin Williamson has talked about his Scream 6 putting a spotlight on Gail and Dewey in the past, but Sydney was still around. And I believe he's also talked about how Sydney was supposed to get married during this story, Ghostface returned during the biggest moment of her life, etc., then, during one of the more recent sequels, Scream 5, Gail openly confesses to feeling like she started all of this, and of course, Sydney suggests, no, Billy Loomis started this, referring to Ghostface. I think what Gail might be considering with a thought like that, though, is that she did indeed put a spotlight on Ghostface that Billy Loomis and Stu, I'm dead as fuck mocker, could never have when they were nobodies now turned maggot infested leftovers in comparison to Gail's rising influence as a reporter. She wrote the book on this as she loves to tell us. It spawned a film which spawned a franchise and Ghostface runs wild in pop culture for that universe and our own reality. So, so in Scream's world, one of the major influences on this is indeed Gail Weathers. Obviously, the preferred again route is for Spyglass to sell the rights, but you have to remain realistic because the chances are they're likely not going to do that because this IP is one of the more profitable things they have right now. What else is Spyglass doing that people are checking for? That's the likely reason they aren't going to sell the rights. The only way I can see them selling the rights is if for some reason they aren't able to secure any of the talent that they want for the Scream 7 that's currently being overhauled and rewritten in the form of a new draft, but whatever. So a full creative reboot, as we've seen reported, should be set in the same world, obviously. And if Courtney, Mason and Jasmine are willing to still do the project, this is one way it could work. Still do a story with a stab revival and a true crime limited series in the works. So this is kind of me going over some of the stuff I've talked about in the past, but still do a story with a stab revival and a true crime limited series in the works so that it can function as the center of the story's main plot. Tara and Sam are off with their mother, Christina, who has decided to mend that relationship. So those three are off in another country and have been gone for about a month or two at this point. Uh, it's been two years since the New York spree, but the announcement of the stab revival and true crime limited series being in the works after the studios initially spent years questioning if they should even bother doing it due to the last two sprees causing hesitancy uh, and doubt in their decisions. This announcement has inspired one or more people to become Ghostface. These people hate reporters like Gail. Hollywood executives, media in general, and Mindy even, because remember, allegedly she had a successful podcast or YouTube channel platform during the now scrap, scrap Scream 7. So let's still add Mindy to the list of despised characters for Ghostface and let her have a successful podcast in Scream 7. Let's keep that idea alive, please. Anyone who in the killer's mind aids in exploiting crime and opening up wounds and relatives to innocent victims is on the list because they believe profiting off these tragedies is wrong. They think that their targets on the kill list have corrupted society, especially Hollywood. Gail can carry the story with Chad and Mindy also having significant roles as well. The newbies would just be their friends at Blackmore University. I would use the college setting a little bit more since we don't really see too much of it in Scream 6. You can say it's Chad and Mindy's senior year. I do believe a story like this would really give Mindy a chance to shine if written correctly, given she's the latest horror nerd a lot of fans have fallen in love with, and given how some have taken issue with her not taking the sprees as serious as they think she should be. Here's a chance to put her in the hot seat with more on the line since she's a main target for this story in my mind for this to work because of her podcast. Also, I think Jasmine could do an amazing job with the material. She was phenomenal, in my opinion, during the latter sequence in which Annika was dying. So if we get to see a level of performance like that, if you write her in that same capacity to get those emotions evoked out of her from a performance from Jasmine, I think you could be in for a very good film carried by jasmine brown who many people i see 
probably wouldn't agree, but I think Mindy could carry a film. Hell, if you want to get real nasty and diabolical and outdo what you did with Annika and that heartbreak that Mindy had to endure, make this character endure having to watch her mother, Martha, die live on a feed. Do something there. That There's so much you could do with Mindy in Scream 7 if she's the focus. And if you write it a certain way, like the way I'm presenting here, if they go down this quote unquote reboot route, which hopefully it's still set in the same world. And of course, all this is barring if Mindy or if Jasmine, Courtney and Mason even sign on. But yeah, have her have to endure watching her mother, Martha, get killed by Ghostface live on some type of feed. Uh, Gail is the killer's main target because just as Gail expressed in Scream 5, the killer thinks she started all of this and not Billy Loomis. So this person is in agreement with that thought process. And yes, their explanation would include a reminder to Gail that her platform was on the rise at the time and that she indeed, she indeed did open doors for Billy that he never could have on his own. Open doors for him, Ghostface, Stu, anyone else that's donned the costume. So the opening kill can be a producer who came to New York to meet with Gail to talk about her involvement in the limited true crime series or even the stab revival. Ghostface's ultimate goal is getting Hollywood to pull the plug on their plans for the true crime show and the stab revival by framing Gail as the reporter who became desperate for her next big story and because or or and became the very thing that she helped make so famous. That is how I could see a reboot of Scream 7 working if you still had characters like Gail, Chad and Mindy. I didn't really go over too much of what Chad would be doing because I didn't really think that far. But Chad would be here still in college. You can give him some side plot, obviously. He's still a target because it would be something that would impact Mindy if he were to die. I'm not saying that I would kill him in the story, but that is how I would quote unquote reboot Scream if it ultimately had to happen and keep it in the same universe. Now, if they are not able to secure any of the returning stars, it should still be in the same universe. I just have no idea what you would do at that point besides just telling a story with a whole new set of characters, shine a light on true crime, make it somebody who's been obsessed with true crime for a very long time. They were always willing to, or they were always planning to commit a spree donning the ghost face costume, but there's a more personalized edge slash motive involved with it as well that they will disclose to the victims during the final act. That's the only thing I can see happening that would work if you can't get any of the returning talent back. You guys can let me know what you think about my version of a Scream 7 if the returning stars again included Gail, Chad, Mindy, and just those three. And I guess you could toss in Kirby. I just don't really see Kirby necessary for the story I have in my mind. I'm not against Hayden coming back though. Let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.